Hey guys, welcome to Preteen Ministry Online. We're so glad you're here today. If this is your first time here, my name's Miss Lauren. If you're a regular preteen with us, welcome back. We're super glad to have you today. We're gonna start off today with worship, so I want you to stand up. This is actually one of my favorite songs, and I know a lot of you love it too, so let's stand up and worship together. Are you ready? I'm singing now. One, two, three, let's go. I was made to do amazing things. I know, I know. I was made to be his hands and feet. I know, I know. God made me to shine, makes me come alive, makes me want to live my life for him. God made me to shine, makes me come alive. today and in preteen ministry here we play it a lot so now you get to play it in your house so what you need to do is you're gonna have some time to label four corners or four walls or four places in your house you can label them with paper you can label them with things but they need to be labeled with red blue green or yellow okay so you're gonna have 30 seconds to go and label those things and then meet me right back here Alright, now that you've labeled your four corners or your four walls or places, we are going to start this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow the instructions on your screen. Um, you're going to answer the question that comes on your screen by going to the color that matches your answer. Okay, I want everyone in your house playing if they're watching this. Parents, you can play too. You might even find out something new about your family members, okay? So make sure you follow the instructions.
All right, guys, now we're gonna jump into the lesson time. So I want you to put away all your distractions, um, things that are going to take away from this lesson. I want you to put them away, and that way you can really, really focus on what God has for you tonight. Um, you're gonna have 10 seconds to go get your Bible. I want you to go get your Bible for real, and then meet me right back here. Okay, so have you ever been in an uncertain situation? So I have before. So one time I went to this retreat type thing and it was for believers, for people who had accepted Jesus into their life. But what happened there is that they took our phones away, they took our watches away, and they kind of um, basically just, you were at their beck and call. Like you were not in charge at all. You were not in control. You didn't know what time it was. You didn't know the schedule. You didn't know what was happening next. And it was really weird because if you know me, you know that I am very um, OCD or like type A. Like I like to know what I'm doing. I like to do what I want to do in the order I want to do it. And so it was very, very weird. Now, it was very uncertain about what we're doing next, what was going to be going on, and it was weird for me, but the Lord used that time to show me things that I had never even dealt with. Um, he spoke to me in new ways, and it was just really, really good once I got those distractions out, and so sometimes the uncertain times can be a time of growth, and so remember that we're on a series called Uncertainty, and I just wanted to start out with that story to tell you that sometimes uncertain times can be a time of growth, like I just said. Now, sometimes in uncertain times, we can have stress and anxiety. And sometimes stress and anxiety actually seem to be our default mode or, or they seem to be what we kind of go to because we're just confused. We don't know what's going on. Um, maybe we're anxious because we don't know what's going to happen next. Um, maybe right now you're anxious because you don't know if you're going to see your friends anymore from school because school's pretty much canceled, right? So you may be anxious about that. Some people are excited, but some people may be really anxious about that or upset, right? Some of us, we may not um, get to do the things we wanted to do. Maybe you, you may not know if you're going to get to go on the vacation that was planned, or maybe you're stressed out because we don't know what's going to happen next, right? Maybe you're really annoyed at your siblings because they just won't leave you alone, right? There are so many things in our life right now that could cause and are causing, if we're honest, stress and, tr stress and anxiety. And so the list goes on and on and on. And so today we're going to talk about some things that may could help in that area. So if you have your Bible, which you should because we said to go get it earlier, right? So you're going to turn with me to John. Okay, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You're going to turn with me to John 15, okay? John chapter 15, verse 4. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, in these verses, in these passage, pass, this passage, Jesus is using a pretty interesting analogy, okay? He's basically pointing out that the vine has to be connected to the branches, okay? And obviously we know that because if you pull a weed or you pull something off, it, it dies, right? But we have to remind ourselves, and this, this passage is really showing us that the vine has to be connected to the branches to produce fruit. And so we are like the vine in this scenario. When we stay connected to God, good things happen in our lives. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything in our life is good, because obviously that's not true. But when we stay connected to him, we experience peace, joy, and love no matter the circumstance. Now, again, that doesn't mean that your life is a breeze and nothing's going wrong and everything's perfect. It doesn't mean that, but it does mean that 
we can see and experience these things if we stay connected to God. Even when we're quarantined, okay, even if our parents lose our job, or even if things get worse with the whole coronavirus thing, right, even if all the bad things are happening, if we stay close to God, if we stay connected to God like the vine and the branches, we can find peace in the chaos, okay? So now we're going to turn to Galatians 5, okay? Galatians 5. Let me give you a second to get there. All right, Galatians 5. It says, but the, but the Spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, we know, most of us know, that those are the fruits of the Spirit, what we call the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, these characteristics are not a matter of us trying or doing, but it's a matter of being. So I want you to understand something, okay? We can try to show love. We can try to be joyful, right? But when we stay connected to God, we will become these things. Now, it's an effort. It's like kind of like what we talked about last week where we have to commit to following him and doing those things. We have to commit to that. But when we do, these things are going to pour out of us just like the fruit naturally comes off of the, the vine, right? We have to remind ourselves and stay focused on what Jesus wants us to. And when we stay connected to Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, peace, love, patience, kindness, all of those things are going to pour out of us. Not always because we're human. But if we stay connected, we will see those things. It just happens. It's supposed to be that way. Just like fruit grows, if it stays connected, we will do the same, okay? Now, oftentimes, though, we do experience high levels of stress or anxiety or whatever. And really, the issue is, is that we're not making it a point to connect with God. Now, I want you to really think about this because you... Some of, sometimes we don't know why we have anxiety or stress or whatever, and we feel like we can't even get out of it. But if you were to take the first thought you had and turn it to God, you may not get to the point of being at a high level of stress or anxiety or whatever. You may not have get gotten there if you took that first thought and turned it to Jesus. If you got out your Bible the second you started feeling that way, Right, and even if it's that, if that's every single day, or maybe that's every single hour, right? You don't have anything else to do this during this time, during during these uncertain times. Right now, you could be spending time in the Word every time you have a thought of anxiety or depression or stress or whatever, right? Or maybe it's another book, or maybe it's praying or talking to your parents or a sibling, right? How do you stay connected to God? Because if we do. Like these verses were saying, the fruit's going to come out of us. But if we don't, then you're going to stay in that state of anxiety over and over and over, right? Now, how do we stay connected to God? Maybe some of us, you have to make a list of stuff that you do in your life, okay? And preteens, I'm talking to you because we're big enough. I say that all the time. You're big enough to have a relationship with Jesus, okay? A lot of you have surrendered your life to him, and so you're big enough and old enough and smart enough to really connect with God. And so make a list of the things you do, and Jesus, Jesus should be the top priority. But regardless of if Jesus is number one in your life, He's not just number one, okay? I think sometimes we get that mixed up. He's not just number one. So even if you start the day off with Jesus in a quiet time or something, that's awesome. But then you don't just leave him at number one and then do two, three, four, five, and six, okay? You have to keep Jesus in the center of every single thing. So every thought, every decision you make, everything you do, whether that's a sport, playing with your friends, um, talking with your parents, 
dance, whatever you do, Jesus is number one, but he's also all the other numbers because he needs to be the center of our life, okay? Now, you don't have control over a lot of things that happen to you. I don't have control over stuff that happens to me all the time, but I do have control over if I put Jesus in the center of my life and everything in it or not. We have a choice. And when we put Jesus in the center of every single thing, good stuff happens. And again, I'm not talking about good physical things all the time. Because sometimes it would, sometimes it could, but not always. I'm talking about when we put Jesus in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our stress, in the middle of our anxiety, okay? Or if we catch that thought at the very beginning of what is stressing you out, what is giving you that thought of anxiety? What's starting to make you feel like you can't breathe? If you catch it there and you give it to Jesus, then you're going to see that you experience the peace and love and joy in that chaos, in that stress, in that anxiety. Okay? So, here's another thing I wanted to share with you. So, we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's kind of in the back of your Bible. Well, not kind of, it is. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 12. So that I would be not become too proud of the wonderful things that were shown to me. A painful phys physical problem was given to me. This problem was a message from Satan sent to beat me and keep me from being too proud. I begged the Lord three times to take this problem away from me. But he said to me, My grace is enough for you. When you are weak, my power is made perfect in you. So I am very happy to brag about my weakness. Then Christ's power can live in me. For this reason, I am happy when I have weaknesses, insults, hard times, sufferings, and all kinds of trouble for Christ. Because when I am weak, then I am truly strong. So, we don't know exactly what Paul's physical pain was. Because it doesn't really say that. Other versions of the Bible say it was a thorn in his side or a thorn in his flesh. But we don't know what that was. But Paul had an issue that he wanted God to remove. He wanted God to deal with it. But God said no. God could have removed it, but he said no. He wanted to teach him some things, okay? And God even said that my grace is sufficient for you, right? When you are weak, you're made strong in me. And so that's a big deal. That's crazy because how easy would it have been for God just to take that away from him? But if he did, Paul may not have realized that God's definition of strength is fully, completely dependence upon him, okay? That's, that's hard to do, okay? That's hard to do for adults. That's hard to do for children. But we have to completely depend on God. And when we do, we can see that weakness is actually a good thing, okay? And it's not easy, but it's good. And in our weakness, God's strength is revealed. We see that we can find his strength in our weakness, okay? So last week, this whole week has been a pretty difficult week for me, for our church staff, for a lot of people in our church, right? And there have been a lot of days that have not been easy for me and for some other people because we lost somebody that was very close to us that was a part of our church staff, okay? But here's the thing, I know that she's with Jesus. I know that she's living her best life, right? And so I can give the Lord my weakness in those weak moments because I have them. I do have them. Selfishly, I want her with me, right? I want her here. But I can give that weakness to the Lord. And so when I do, I know and I have to remind myself that when I bring that weakness to him, I can find strength. I can find his strength, not my own. And so if you think about it, the fact is that our lives right now, okay, 
are uncertain. Your life right now is uncertain. It's weird. It doesn't make sense. We've talked about it over and over and over. So I'm not going to go into it. But it's different. It's weird. And life is no longer predictable. And some of us may feel weak. Some of us may feel like we're confused. We're stressed out. We have anxiety. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what to do. But we can remember that in 2 Corinthians, Paul is talking about this. And he's telling us that we can rely on God right now. In this moment of weakness, we can rely on him. And if we humble ourselves to recognize that we need God and we need his strength, we can lean on him through that. And this is a really great example of how you put Jesus in the center of your life, in the center of every thought, in the center of every circumstance, every situation, because when we're weak, he's made strong. He literally speaks it. My grace is sufficient for you. It, that means it's enough, okay? It means it's enough for you. It's enough for ang your anxiety. It's enough for your stress. It's enough for it all. And so we have to remember that. And that's the only way for us to fully experience the joy and peace rather than the stress and anxiety is to put ourselves at the feet of Jesus and allow him to work through our weakness so that his strength is found. And so here are some big ideas, main points, main ideas that I want you to take from this message. Okay. When we stay connected to God, we experience peace, joy, love, no matter the circumstance we face. No matter the circumstance we face, we have, we can have the peace, the joy, the love because God is with us. And when we stay connected to him, we can experience that. And then the second is put Jesus in the center of your life. It's a moment by moment decision. It's a choice, but you can do it. Put him in the center of your life and then other stuff is going to form and, and you, you can be fruitful in those things when you put Jesus in the center of your life. Your life won't be perfect. You're still going to have moments of weakness. You're still going to have moments of anxiety or whatever, but you won't live in a state of anxiety or a state of stress if you put Jesus in the center of every single thing you do. And then the last one is in our weakness, God's strength is revealed, okay? And that this takes humbling ourselves. This takes admitting that you're weak sometimes, and some of us are. Everybody is weak at some moments, okay? Everybody is. But when you are, go to Jesus, go to him, and allow his strength to hold you up, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day and for this time. And Father, I just am so thankful for who you are and that your strength can carry us. Your strength um, is made strong in our weakness. And when we confess that and we come and we're honest with that, you speak to us in ways that we could have never imagined. And so I pray that through our weakness this week, um, through our weakness today, that you just speak to us and remind us that you are strong, you are enough, your grace is enough, and that we can learn and grow and stay connected to you by putting you in the center of our life. And I pray that every single person watching this, that this is an encouragement to them, that you just speak through this message and through this screen so that you are glorified and that these people can just... Um, just be encouraged that they don't have to stay in that anxiety, that stress, that depression, but that they can come to you at any moment. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes.
of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you today I want to encourage you to do something if you're feeling stressed out or you're feeling anxiety or whatever anything that goes along with this listen I want to encourage you reach out to your parents or to a sibling um, 
because they're there for you, okay? And they want to help you. And more importantly, reach out to the Lord this week, okay? I want you also to remember to be sending us your pictures. We miss you so, so much. We love you and we can't wait to see you. And so I want to see those pictures of you doing these lessons, watching these lessons, and it just helps us to be reminded that um, we hopefully will be together again soon, okay? We love you and I'll see you soon. Bye.